Hello. I think everybody is here. Maybe not everybody, but I heard that uh, all the remaining uh, visitors will join us very soon. So we are very happy to uh, start this uh, December, this first December day webinar about driver identification. And uh, uh, we'll be talking today about three main uh, solutions, three main telematic solutions uh, for driver identification. Uh, actually, we'll be talking about uh, radio frequency identification, I-button based identification, and Bluetooth low energy driver identification. So first of all, I would like to uh, just uh, look through your comments in uh, this chat because I see that there are some greetings. Hello, Adil. Uh, hello, Nick. Bonjour. <laughs> Just uh, the uh, uh, little announcement uh, before this webinar that uh, this month uh, is really experimental for us because we decided to conduct for you uh, four uh, similar webinars in four different languages. So the first will be in English today. Next week, we will hold uh, the Spanish webinar, just the same about driver identification, but it will be in Spanish. Uh, then we will um, hold uh, the webinar in French. And uh, just before uh, Christmas, uh, we will uh, even hold uh, a webinar about driver identification in Portuguese. So. Uh, we just decided to do it just to check the feedback from uh, you, from uh, our other clients who don't speak English. And uh, um, in January, we will report uh, the results of this uh, marketing experiments uh, as well, because I think it will be interesting to you as well. Okay, so uh, let's get started uh, with our subject today. And uh, first of all, I would like uh, that Dima shares the presentation with you, driver identification. As uh, I have already told you today, we're going to talk about quite traditional ways for driver identification. When I say traditional, I mean uh, RFID identification and uh, I button identification. Why are they traditional? Because uh, I'm sure that everyone knows uh, how to use them and uh, many, many of you have been already used, uh, used uh, these solutions in the past. And uh, uh, for sure, uh, RFID and I buttons may be compared quite easily because these are two wired uh, ways for driver identification, whereas the Bluetooth low energy solution is wireless. Um, actually, I don't want you to uh, perceive this webinar um, uh, just uh, like a recommendation or something else, because we will be talking equally about all ways of uh, driver identification, and maybe sometimes we'll be highlight will be highlighting some pros and cons for each solution. Yes, because sometimes there are projects uh, where uh, you um, will easily uh, and rather use uh, wired ways of driver identification. And in contrast, there are, uh, you, you may face some project where uh, wireless driver identification um, maybe really uh, a good uh, good solution for you, the best solution. So um, um, actually, first of all, just before uh, start this long presentation, I would like to introduce you our new, our renewed GPS tracker. It looks uh, uh, maybe you can just. Um, uh, return the screen <laughs> yes because uh, i want uh i want to show our renew gps tracker it looks just similar to adm 333 and adm uh, 333 ble however now uh and already we are ready to uh provide you with this renew gps tracker 
uh, ADM 333v2 version 2, and this GPS tracker is uh, different from uh, its uh, previous um, versions because it has a Bluetooth low energy module which allows it uh, to be uh, wireless, so to support wireless accessories, just like uh, wireless sensors, wireless relays, and so on. And at the same time, it, uh, it is equipped with a S485, with one wire, uh, one output, two analog inputs, and so on. So actually, this is a very universal solution, which you can easily use uh, both for wired and for wireless accessories. So now we can get started with this presentation because all these solutions right now will be based on this uh, renewed GPS tracker because it will allow you to simultaneously um, uh, use one wire RS485 and Bluetooth low energy. So you can just experiment various driver identification solutions, ways, and finally choose and find what will be really good for you. So the first um, part will be uh, about uh, radio frequency. Yes, you can just, uh, how, how it generally works. I think that uh, you all know how it generally works because you uh, use a, a talk in the case uh, with uh, uh, for example, uh, with, with Bluetooth Low Energy, because BLE talks are used for driver identification, or you use uh, you will use uh, an RFID card, yes, because for RFID identification we use uh, uh, these small cards which we have here uh, on our table, or you will use a button key, uh, and we will show you uh, later how it looks and. Uh, I'm sure you know how it looks. So, and with these uh, key stacks of cards, uh, you will um, 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 proceed with the driver identification, but in all traditional ways of driver identification, normally you will uh, have to buy, you will have to use a reader. Uh, for RFID, this will be an RFID reader. For iButton keys, it will be an iButton reader. Right, and uh, only in uh, Bluetooth Low Energy uh, driver identification solution, the reader, uh, actually the GPS tracker, will play the role of the reader. And we'll be talking about this later. And uh, as uh, uh, actually, as usual, the GPS tracker uh, receives the data from the reader and transmits uh, this data to the server via GSM. It's quite easy and uh, simple. We will not uh, be talking about this so much. And uh, um, actually the first, uh, how it looks at the server. Um, actually uh, at the server, all three driver identification uh, solutions, driver identification methods look quite, quite similar. Uh, no nuances here because uh, you will be assigning uh, a top or a card or a key to a specific driver. And uh, all these uh, IDs will be stored, will be transmitted to the server. And uh, for sure you have, uh, for example, uh, at uh, We Alone, uh, you have, uh, it's, it's very comfortable because you have special uh, fields, special windows that you can open and uh, read and find all relevant information about this specific driver. You can assign some tasks to this driver or, uh, so, uh, for example, um, remove some tasks uh, and uh, do uh, what, you, uh, what you want here at the server. Uh, however, I don't know, maybe Dima, our technical support, will uh, tell you uh, how, uh, about differences uh, related to connection of each um, uh, hardware to the server, because uh, uh, actually at the side of software, at the side of how it looks, no difference. However, it's very different uh, um, 
in relation to uh, installation and connection to the server. And now Dima will share some more details about it. Yes, thank you, Xenia. Um, Kula is talking, yeah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, but I think I will start with uh, Mylon also. I'd like to show you how it looks at the server in a, a little different way. Uh, we would like to share you the screencast uh, of our uh, imagine uh, of our uh, yeah our object and uh, drivers that we created in Violin. Imaginatory yeah, object. Imaginatory okay. object. Okay. Uh, actually, it's quite real. This. Okay. Uh, yes. This. It's just on our table. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so, first of all, we created a couple of drivers, different uh, drivers that will be assigned okay. uh, to the object in different cases. As you can see from their names, uh, different drivers uh, will be uh, assigned, will be binded uh, according to different rules. Uh, these rules uh, means that we will use different um, periphery, different identification methods uh, to uh, create this uh, driver system, to create uh, an event that will um, push uh, the driver to be binded to some object. So we'll be able to start shift, to trace these moments and so on. Uh, first of all, I'd like to show you how it works with RFID. Um, here we have the reader. RFID reader, yes. ADM. Hold it. Yes, yes, okay. sure. Mm -hmm. uh, this ADM20, I think you, I may know it pretty well. And uh, here I have uh, an RFID card. Um, we can, you we can, have... You can use M Marine or yeah. Mi Fair cards, yes, RFID exactly. cards with this RFID reader. Um, they have different frequencies. Actually, we have both of them here, mm -hmm. uh, but we will work with this one. Uh, 125 uh, megahertz and uh, yes so we'll conduct the reading event yes as you can see we have the led mm -hmm. activated here and uh, we are waiting for the device to uh, receive the information from the reader send it to the server and uh, conduct an event that will uh, lead us, yes, to the driver binding. Here, you can see the driver, it appeared, and also... Good driver. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I tried to choose best drivers to we have. Us, yeah, yes. Okay. <laughs> and also, you can see different types of notifications, uh, online notification, a pop-up window. Mm -hmm. Basically, you also can um, create a telegram, notifications so you have them in your messengers uh, and uh, also very popular and very common way to uh, have uh, the latest uh, updates about what's happening with your object is email but here we'll show the most um, easy to see and easy to use one mm -hmm. Uh, so yes, this was the case of RFID card. Mm -hmm. Let me pull it out. And we will also utilize uh, RFID K because uh, some, um, somebody may think that RFID K has, you know, some uh, really different meaning and really different uh, mechanism of how it works. But basically it's the very same as the card so if in some cases the cards are not useful, are not suitable for your design, you may use the K, it's very small and uh, I think it's more common for everybody to have a K, some, uh, to have a K like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
I think, uh, let me try to use another one. Yes, this. Okay, and uh, here we will see uh, the identificator. Basically, uh, basically the um, mechanism that we are utilizing here is, uh, yes, you can see the drivers. The driver changed. Mm -hmm. We have another driver right now mm -hmm. and new uh, notification here and new notification here. Uh, the mechanism that uh, lies in the whole um, logic of driver assigning is very similar as Xenia uh, already mentioned, uh, as she said, we receive uh, an identificator on the server, mm -hmm. uh, we are utilizing Vylon in our case, and we um, bind this uh, identificator to a driver. So when the server detects uh, this ID uh, in the raw data, the tracking device send, it decides to be in the driver. It can be ex exclusive driver. So uh, if one driver is uh, assigned, another will be um, um, another will be uh, unbinded. Okay. Or uh, you can use um, couple of drivers, for instance, if your design is uh, requires something like that. Uh, I think we can make a little pause and um, read the question and answer. Is the ignition will be on yeah. after swiped or touching the RFID card? Uh, it can be. Uh, we will talk about it a little later. Yes, it has this in plan of our webinar. Yeah, it's, uh, we'll be talking about uh, a solution for engine cutoff based on uh, our GPS tracker and uh, wired or wireless relay. So yeah. just keep watching till the end. <laughs> uh, is the reader is RS two hundred thirty two? No, actually, it's four hundred eighty five. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I think, more common interface for such kind of periphery. So, mm -hmm. yes, we utilize this it, one. It's more advanced, like an inter interface, I think, RS-485. Mm -hmm. It has its own pros and cons. Okay. <laughs> because maybe that's the opinion, the, the, the purely Russian opinion about IS-485. Because um, I know that in many countries, you're right, people. If yeah. you don't think so, okay. Make sure the video will be downloaded sure. later. Yes, we also broadcasting this webinar on YouTube, mm -hmm. on our YouTube channel. You can check it uh, there. If and you make are, your questions there yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. If you are not really comfortable with maybe Zoom as the platform. And uh, yes, we will save this video. So I can put away this reader. Uh, I yes, will, yes, will yes. Be, uh, will be now person to I button, I think, no? Um, I see in chat that there is some sound issues. Uh, so, yes. Um, are you also from the name of Geotop? No, um, I, I don't know actually what you mean, but uh, the, our company is Neomatica and now uh, uh, as far as I know, GeoTop is a platform just like Willow. And uh, if you want to integrate uh, your platform with our devices, we can share our protocol, if you meant this. Uh, okay, I think we are on the very good way with such drivers, Margaret Thatcher um, and yes, others. Yes. So we can just keep uh, explaining and keep uh, uh, introducing um, the second driver identification method. Yes, exactly. We started uh, with the wide way of driver identification. So I think we can continue with um, with a little different one. Uh, so let it be the Bluetooth for energy. 
And what about I button? I button will be just the same. Uh, like yes, say, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, I button will be just the same, mm -hmm. but as for connection. Yes. To the server. Okay. As for connection for this to the server, mm -hmm. it has a little different logic when we are talking about um, the way of um, connecting, and we will talk about it a little later mm -hmm. when we will uh, move to the. Um, each system separately. Hardware part. Yes, hardware mm -hmm. part. Where now we're we, talking about software and yeah. how to use them all uh, we'll at discuss. your server. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. where we will discuss about it. Uh, so, yes, um, I think you can imagine how the iButton reader looks like and uh, the K, it's mm -hmm. also pre pretty. Yes. And have. the reader we have it yes. here, yes. The reader is here and K also. Mm -hmm. It works with the... Um, with yeah, the touch. It's touch. Yes, it's touch memory. So uh, these moves will lead you to uh, the reading events. Um, I think there are a lot of questions, but we will answer all of them after the, the this part. After this mm -hmm. part will be en ended. Okay. So, and the very last uh, way of identification is Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, Xenia told uh, us that there, there are Bluetooth Low Energy tags that can be read uh, by the tracking device and uh, used as uh, identification method. And these words are Totally, uh, totally truth, but we can not only use the some, you, you know, some special kind of tags, uh, something uh, designed only for identification. You also can utilize very different Bluetooth uh, devices in case you have now a suitable tag. Uh, and I think we will try to show you how does it work. Uh, here I have a uh, small fit, uh, fitness bracelet. Uh, it has Bluetooth low energy inside. And this identificator is, um, inside, uh, is written inside our tracking device. So basically when tracking device will detect the signal from the, uh, from the periphery, it should uh, be another driver, uh, Bluetooth low energy driver, uh, to the to the object we have. So yes, let me uh, turn the broadcasting on, and we should wait for new data to come on. Yes, you can see. It's um, very fast. Yes, it's pretty fast. Mm -hmm. uh, it's even faster than with the RFID, I think. Actually, it depends on how often mm -hmm. do we receive the data on the server, for okay. sure. Uh, you can see that in our case, it uh, updates approximately once every 30 seconds. Uh, so yes, this is how it works. Uh, this bracelet uh, works right now mm -hmm. as uh, real attack. So in your case, you can uh, give such bracelets to your drivers. You can give such bracelets to passengers in case of you want to trace uh, the passenger traffic mm -hmm. and so on. In this field, there are enormous, um, enormous uh, Opportunity. Opportunities, yeah. Uh, various different way how to utilize Bluetooth or energy for identification purposes. Uh, I think we can finish with Valon, with software part, and move forward, but... To the hardware part. Yes, to the hardware part, but I think we can also make some, yes. Make some, Answer some questions. Yeah. Uh, with Billy, can we can ATM be set to mobilize vehicle if TAC is not present? This is uh, part of our um, presentation. Um, yes, uh, uh, with BLE, can ATM be set to mobilize vehicle if TAC is not 
present. Uh, yes, it's possible, I think. Yes, we will talk about the immobilization logic with mm -hmm. the wireless or wired relay uh, a little later. In the very end, yes, we'll in be introducing end. the solution with immobilizers. Wired immobilizer and wireless immobilizer, how to use, where to use, why to use. Yeah. Uh, and uh, which card? Which, okay. Um, okay, uh, can you please tell me benefits of ADM? Now the uh, most important and uh, the most evident benefit of ADM 333 V2 version 2 is that it's universal. And in the very beginning of this webinar, I uh, told you that now we have wired interfa interfaces for wired accessories and uh, Bluetooth Low Energy for wireless accessories. I think this is actually the, and it's very flexible. I mean, uh, in its configurations, uh, you can uh, change uh, the settings um, and adapt them as much as uh, possible for your specific project. I think it's very cool as a device. Yeah. Now, um, question and it's not expensive. <laughs> yes. So question from Amadou. Which GPS trackers of Pneumatica could be connected with this leader? ADM 300, yes, ADM 100, yes, uh, ADM 700, yes, uh, former ADM 33. I, I think uh, I'm going to mention 333, yes, yes it's it possible. Was mm -hmm. All of sure. the trackers you, man, uh, you mentioned there, mm -hmm. uh, all of them can be connected to this reader. Because they all have a S four hundred eighty five. Yes, uh, I want to know more about ADM. That's great, uh, mod, and uh, just uh, share your contact details, and I will email you all all uh, details and all information about our devices with all the link to our webinars, to our manuals, to our social networks, where we are talking about um, how we love ADM and, and we'll, why you should love them as well. Yeah, we will share our contacts in the yeah, very end. Sure. Which card type and readers are supported? Uh, ADM uh, 20 supports uh, two uh, different types of cards. Emmerine and Mifa mm -hmm. with different frequencies. When we are talking about uh, these ones, yes, when we are talking about uh, ADM 333 as a tracker uh, where we can connect the uh, some reader uh, to which we can connect some reader, um, it's important to understand how do the reader you mention uh, works. Because uh, some of uh, readers we met uh, um, utilizing LLS Omnicom, a uh, fuel level sensor protocol to transmit the data. In this case, there are no problem to connect it to ADM 333. If we are talking about some more specific um, specific uh, equipment, it's um, it's important to understand how does it work, and uh, after that we can tell you whether it will work with ADM 333 or not. Mm -hmm. uh, which connection interfaces uh, are the reader are offering? Uh, this reader offers you only one connection method. It's uh, via RS-485, mm -hmm. but you can use, for example, an adapter, mm -hmm. uh, an adapter like RS-485 BLE or RS-485 RS-232 mm -hmm. uh, to receive the data. There are a couple of um, solutions that suggest you such kind of functionality. So. It's um, in the very end, it's not the problem to connect this reader to some tracking device, maybe that does not have RS-485. I bought um... connected through one wire, th connected through one wire. Yeah, absolutely mm -hmm. right. 
Um, if the RFID reader, uh, we have no need for I button. Yes, actually. Yeah, in more details, we will talk it right now, mm -hmm. just after these questions. Uh, regarding creation of magnetic cards for trials, which tool uh, I will be used to create and configure the card with driver profile as well for iBottom. Uh, basically, the only software tool you need to create uh, the driver card, I, I mean virtual, virtual driver card. More advanced your software? Uh, more will it be possible yes yes because sure well alone is a very good option for this yes because but i don't know whether uh, at uh, different servers uh, there are always such possibilities opportunities but for well on we can yes assure yes. you that it will be possible Here we demonstrated you violence so there you can create mm -hmm. everything that you saw right now okay it was created uh, within the violon and it not took uh, us a long time. Yeah, it's very user-friendly yeah. interface. Did you get C mark, even two questions from the same? <laughs> from yes. Okay, yes, we have the C mark for this GPS tracker. We received it last year. Can we yeah. connect your BLE tax to other brands such as Photonica or Rutella? <laughs> uh, think number one. Uh, now we do not produce PLE tags. We only produce GPS trackers and we produce RFID reader, which we are using in this presentation as well. As for BLE tags, you can buy them right now wherever you want. The uh, important point, the necessary thing, is that these BLE tags. Would be uh, would be supporting uh, iBeacon, Eddystone, or BLE protocols. In this case, it will be possible to use these BLE tags with this GPS tracker. Okay. Uh, can we? Can, okay, I have already answered this question. Thank yes. you. Great. Okay, we have uh, emails. Thank you very much for sharing your emails. NFC, I think. Um, I don't know uh, what Nick wanted to, to, to tell us, but NFC supported in our relay, in our BLE devices. Can I get an intro PDF from your side? Uh, sure, sure. We mm -hmm. will share all PDFs and uh, all presentations uh, we have. I would like to know how you can bypass standard tracking blockers available on Alibaba. These are broad spectrum blockers over multiple frequency. What is your uh, for safe and ongoing uh, R&D development. Um, you mean uh, JAMS, I think. Mm. Bypass standard tracking blockers. Because the tracking blockers in... Yeah. I think you, you, sounds like... you are meaning JAMS. Our GPS tracker, uh, actually we are using a very smart uh, protocol and algorithm in our GPS tracking device because, uh, uh, and we call it even anti-jamming because uh, the GPS tracker uh, is capable to understand when uh, a jammer has been used. And here the software uh, will be very helpful to you as well because uh, at Wellon, for example, there, there is a possibility to uh, configure some alerts, some alarms uh, when a, a JAMA is uh, being used. You will uh, see it uh, for sure at Wellon with the help of our GPS tracker. So it's quite possible. The GPS tracker, I'm just answering right now to the most with uh, frequently asked question, is it possible that your GPS tracker uh, will stop the JAMA? No. And uh, as far as I know, uh, no GPS tracker is capable to block the JAMA or to stop the JAMA. So in my opinion, it's not possible. Or maybe you will have to use a different device for an extra device. Okay. I think uh, these are all questions for now, and we can go to hardware part. 
Um, the hardware part uh, actually will be devoted to the items you will have to use for each driver identification method. So three main technologies we can go to. Uh, so just I will maybe uh, comment a bit this picture because you can see uh, on my hand three um, uh, devices and uh, we have already uh, shown you the uh, I button key. Yes, you can see it. You will be using uh, this I button key with uh, an I button reader. You can see RFID card and Merino uh, Mifair as well as uh, Bluetooth low energy tag. Yeah. So, and uh, um, we can change the slide because uh, it will be about first RFID cards with an RFID reader and the GPS tracker. So, in this case, if you choose, if you have already chosen this driver identification method, you will have to use three main items. The first item is our GPS tracker ATM 333 which you will be connected via RS-485 to the RFID reader to this device, which we uh, also produce in Neomatica, which we have now um, on our table, and RFID card, okay? Just uh, uh, maybe uh, in some cases you will have to use uh, uh, an extra device, an adapter, for programming your RFID reader and RFID uh, tag. If you use a, an RFID tag, there is a big difference between RFID cards yeah. and RFID uh, tags. In Neomatica, we produce RFID tags. They are um, rather heavy devices. Um, um, however, they are mostly used for uh, trailers and identification, some extra uh, parts on uh, uh, having machines identification, uh, garbage bins identification, and so far, and so on, and so far. So here, since we are uh, talking today about driver identification, we uh, decided even not to show the tags because they are not traditionally used for driver identification. Because for driver identification, RFID cards are used, not RFID tags. Yeah. And for example, just a small a comment about RFID tax. Our RFID tax are fully programmable and we even have a configurator for them where you can configure them as you want. Whereas RFID cards are not programmable, are not configurable, so they are completely passive and uh, you, uh, they, they will be fully uh, dependent on the RFID reader. The RFID reader, um, is available for configuration, for programming in uh, our uh, RFID configurator, which you can download easily from our website. So uh, this is the RFID uh, solution, how it, it works. We have already explained it, uh, um, uh, I think, uh, in details. And now we can go to, um, and I just wanted to um, highlight uh, that, uh, for example, with RFID, um, cards and uh, this RFID solution, you have the possibility to um, make the white list for your authorized drivers. And uh, this list is about five drivers. Actually, uh, the difference here is that uh, the unlimited number of cards may be read by the reader. However, if you want to restrict uh, the number of the authorized drivers uh, to whom you would like to provide uh, the authorized access to, to, to some vehicles, you can define it in the configurator and define up to five drivers and the reader will be uh, authorizing the access to their vehicle only uh, to these five drivers not more than five drivers, but it will be possible. So it, it's fully configurable in uh, ADM20 RFID reader configurator, where you can define so-called so subnets. In these subnets, you will be putting specific uh, driver ID. So the next uh, um, 
uh, way is I button keys with uh, an I button reader. You can see it as well. Actually, the principle is just the same. Uh, however, in contrast with the RFID, the um, uh, connection method here between I button key and I button reader, uh, actually it's uh, a kind of digital signal or something like this, or analog signal. Yeah, digital. Digital signal, yeah. That's the difference with the RFID, how it works. However, you can still use the same GPS tracker, ADN 333, because it's, it is equipped with one wire, which is necessary here to connect the I button reader. Uh, and you can use different button keys and the same. Our GPS tracker allows storing up to five driver ID. If you want to use um, the white list, it will be all, uh, also possible with this button solution. Okay, and... Uh, uh, and I think we should uh, just talk about it one more time okay between these two um wired solutions uh, there there is the main difference rfid um variant uh is more suitable for projects mm -hmm. when there can be not only near field identification but also some uh, identification on long distances because RFID reader supports RFID tag mm -hmm. that has uh, that have coverage of um, 100 meters. Mm -hmm. So in this case, that's the uh, advantage. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. it's more flexible, mm -hmm. much more flexible than I button that works only as we already shown you and uh, told about it in touch. Mm -hmm. Because only RFID has approximate and uh, uh, for identification, yeah, yes, yeah? Yes. because with I button you can just come to the I button reader and uh, touch the reader with yes, the key. Yes, no exactly. other way here with this solution. So actually, it will be completely up to you what to choose because you, if, if you have some projects where it will be quite enough uh, to touch the uh, uh, the reader, maybe uh, you will choose a I button system, uh, or if you have uh, some requirements for uh, far identification as well, we would recommend you to use RFID. However, the third method is uh, BLE tax. Actually, the opportunities here are just the same. The white list for five specific drivers, you can create it and manage it uh, as you wish, because uh, here the same, you have the same GPS track ID and 300. 33, which supports Eddystone, iBeacon, and Bluetooth Low Energy tax. Uh, now you can buy these tax wherever you want, on AliExpress, for example. There are plenty, plenty of different tax. Uh, however, um, I can uncover this, the, the, the secret of our company that we are now working on the creation of our own Bluetooth Low Energy tax. It will appear next year for sure, and uh, we'll, we'll be able to um, um, provide you this device as well. Um, advantages of this solution um, actually are the following. Uh, number one, uh, no installation, um, almost, I would say, because you will have to install the GPS tracker, but after it, uh, the installation process will be over because um, Bluetooth low energy uh, tags are uh, read uh, in a wireless way and uh, uh, for sure you will not have to install them because you will just distribute them uh, among your drivers, that's all. Um, number two, advantage number two, no reader, no need to purchase a very expensive reader because uh, uh, the main issue with RFID and I button solution is that you always need to buy a reader. The reader is very expensive. Even a pneumatical RFID reader costs, uh, I would say, that's a triple cost of a GPS tracker, I would say, because the reader is quite a specific device uh, and uh, it's, it's not cheap. Here, 
the role of the reader is played by the GPS tracker. And you won't have to buy some adapters and put cables and uh, uh, look for a GPS tracker with IS-485, no need. Everything will be uh, via Bluetooth Low Energy. Very simple, very easy to use uh, solution. So, and uh, um, um, maybe the last thing is that you can uh, use it, uh, actually not, not the last, because I <laughs> recalled uh, uh, another thing, another advantage about the active status of these tags, because RFID cards and these small I button keys are, are all passive. You can't program them, you can't influence them. Uh, whereas with BLE tags, they are all active, they are transmitting data as well on their own, so you can configure them. And normally, even uh, Chinese suppliers, they uh, will provide you with their special applications where you will be able to program these tags and to manage them. That's really cool in contrast with all other uh, traditional solutions. And the last thing is that uh, you can also use our Android applications uh, to uh, manage and to configure all these tags. It's much easier, mm -hmm. user-friendly experience sure. than uh, in the case of iButton and RFID. And the result will be just the same. Uh, because five uh, authorized uh, the, the white list for five drivers, unlimited number of tags that the GPS tracker can read, uh, and uh, um, the possibility to use uh, all these uh, in our application, completely free application. Also, the possibility to use uh, to configure all the uh, all these in the configurator uh, from the side of software, so it will look just the same, but it will result in that you uh, won't waste uh, your time for installation process uh, and uh, your money uh, for uh, buying and putting cables and so far and so on. And another uh, good thing about BLE tags, it's easy to install, so it's easy mm -hmm. to replace in case sure. of yeah. something going wrong. And these uh, things, because I uh, uh, have uh, just analyzed a little bit the supplies uh, of BLE tax. There are plenty, plenty of BLE tax in the market right now, uh, extremely cheap. So it will be fully up to you what kind of tax to choose, because uh, uh, there are talks uh, where you can uh, manage the power of transmitter. There are talks where you can, for example, uh, there are bracelet talks, uh, necklace talks, and so, uh, so so on and so far. Just uh, analyze a bit uh, this method and think, just start, uh, at least start thinking of this possibility because um, I'm sure uh, this may be uh, uh, might be a discovery for you and even uh, the discovery of this year because uh, that's a good good alternative to what we had what we have uh, had before what we have now so we have some questions yeah. what is the amount thank you okay uh, talking about the maximum amount of tags that can be connected to the tracker uh, basically the I think the most interesting feature uh, there is that you are not connecting TAC to a tracking device. So basically it's unlimited fully. Mm -hmm. You can bring 100, 1000 tags in one place. Yeah. It's, it will be really hard to understand which one uh, you need at the at one specific moment, but uh, normally there is no limitation in the tracker mm -hmm. of uh, connected with how much uh, tags it can um, not proceed, but uh, walk, walk at all. Mm -hmm. You should not uh, somehow uh, special conduct some uh, conduct something special connection between uh, the reader. Uh, the tracking device actually uh, and the BLE talk. It's just receiving the I mm -hmm. ID senses to the server. And uh, in case you find the whitelist of five drivers, 
are not fully suitable for your design, you can create whitelist on the server. Mm -hmm. There is no problem with it. Uh, you will receive more uh, identificators on the server, but the server by itself will um, get rid of uh, unnecessary and show your notifications uh, and being drivers according only to identifications you tell it to use. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty simple in this case. Do you plan and identify using fingerprint biometric? Honestly, we didn't have such plans uh, before. We are uh, designing right now our own BLE tag, but I don't think it will have a fingerprint biometric. Uh, yes, at the moment we do not have such technology, mm -hmm. but maybe in the future. Yeah, maybe. Uh, could I button be combined with car ignition so the driver would be able to start the car after have identified first? Uh, I, I think we can now go to our last case because, uh, yes, so we could assign group driver to rise to drive a specific vehicle. Yes, and uh, the last uh, Yeah, yeah. It, we will be talking about uh, yeah. it right now. And do you have... Uh, a management platform developed that is integrated to multi-purpose usage. We have our own platform. If you're interested in it, we can share details. Yeah. And Wylan that we use to demonstrate you. Yeah, we have demonstrated this uh, in Wylan because Wylan is really per a perfect platform, very yeah. advanced. And uh, for sure, we can show this. It's good for multi-purpose usage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wylan is the best in this, in this case. Yes, right. So, as a race access to the vehicle and engine cutoff, actually, all three methods will allow you to uh, authorize uh, access to the vehicles uh, to specific drivers and to block or unblock engine in case or um, uh, if needed, actually. So, uh, in relation to how it will be made uh, with hard, uh, hardware part. So uh, you uh, will um, have to use uh, a relay for this, yes? Mm -hmm. Because uh, relay uh, uh, is used to block and unblock the engine. So you can use a wide, very simple and cheap relay, which you can see um actually in uh, on your left i don't know maybe on your right <laughs> because i see it on my left so uh very simple and very cheap relay which you will connect uh to the discrete output of this gps tracker and uh, uh you will be able to block the engine at any moment however you can use our relay adm uh 33 uh, we have it here. You can just uh, show the screen because yeah. now we'll be explaining this in details. So you can use our uh, immobilizer ADM 33 uh, with the same GPS tracker ADM 333. When I say wireless, I mean that they will be connected uh, without cables, without yeah. wires, only with Bluetooth low energy. And uh, the principle, the, the, the main principle of uh, function of this relay is blocking the edge, the engine uh, at the loss of Bluetooth signal. When this, uh, as soon as this relay, this immobilizer, as, as we call it sometimes, uh, as soon as this device, this relay, uh, loses the Bluetooth uh, signal with the managing device, the tracking device, or your smartphone, the managing device may be um, presented by, by your smartphone, it blocks the engine. The big advantage of this solution is the absence of cables between the two devices. Uh, for example, we have many clients right now who use it as a ghost device. They just hide uh, uh, this relay um, uh, in, uh, in a car. And uh, um, people who want to, uh, for example, steal this car or make something unauthorized with this car, they don't understand what uh, is happening uh, at the moment when they 
understand that uh, the car doesn't move and the engine is blocked because they don't see wires. They don't understand that there's something uh, inside the car. And that's really cool in contrast with the simple, with the traditional relay because they, uh, nobody will never able to cut the cables between the two devices. The other advantage is that you can uh, fully manage and configure this device from your smartphone because we have two free apps for this immobilizer and at any moment you can block the engine just press on the button on your smartphone or unblock it in the same way so uh, it is all also up to you what really to choose what solution to adapt for your specific project because um, in some projects it will be quite enough to use a white relay, I button uh, driver identification method. In some uh, projects um, it won't be enough, so you will uh, be thinking really of some innovative uh, wireless solutions. I think that's uh, maybe the very logic end of our webinar. And if you have some other questions, we will be very happy to answer. So, for example, do you, uh, how long will it take to expand capacity? I think it's about capacity of whitelist. Uh, it's the capacity of what? Whitelist. Ah, of whitelist. The capacity of what? Now, now we have, I think uh, the, this capacity will be extended in our new GPS trackers because in 2021, yeah. Um, our new LTE GPS trackers, they will be 3G and 4G GPS trackers. Uh, they uh, should have uh, more uh, extended uh, whitelist because they have uh, more memory and uh, much more opportunities. I think actually even this one, the United mm -hmm. tracking device, ADM 333, also will have uh, capacity of white list mm -hmm. a little bit more i'm actually not ready to tell you the final uh the final number right now but mm -hmm. it will be more than five now it allows in this modification yes, yeah yes, yes. It's, it's better it became really better and we didn't change the price so um but I will, how do you manage blocking to Bluetooth hacking? No, that is used together. Uh, I think you mean uh, Hagen. Yeah. I'm sorry if I uh, read your name in, in, in correct way. Uh, I think you mean, you're talking about how we can um, handle the uh, whole process of hacking of these devices or for example you mean the situation when the bluetooth connection is somehow jammed it's interrupting there is some interference that uh, influence but that's um, good i think when yes, it's, when, yes. when it's hacked because the, the the engine will be blocked automatically yes in this yeah. case uh, the relay is equipped with encryption mm -hmm. uh, with uh, authorization uh, with um, automatic, um, you know, some kind of alarm mm -hmm. algorithm that will, um, that will be proceed and will block the engine or uh, will lead to some different, uh, but uh, programmed by you. Uh, result in case of there will be a Bluetooth connection loss. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's pretty good uh, protected from you know the very um, uh, very rude and very uh, common ways of how do people uh, work with such kind of devices. I mean, when they are against of them and trying to influence uh, them somehow. This uh, relay, this immobilizer is largely used right now in the South Africa. I know that uh, you, Hagen, you are from Johannesburg, if I'm not mistaken. I can 
be mistaken, but you get in touch with our distributor of this uh, thing and you can even test it because it's available in, Jaha in, in Cape Town, they're based in Cape Town and you can easily uh, get uh, some samples of this yeah. device in, in Cape Town and Johannesburg, everywhere available. In Africa as well, we have many distributors right now. What about use in 5G? So actually, we are planning to launch the production of 3G and 4G GPS trackers, but uh, sincerely, we uh, did not think of 5G. <laughs> I can't uh, now tell you anything about it. Could I button be combined uh, with car ignition so the driver would be able to start the car after have identified first, so we could assign group drivers authorized to drive a specific vehicle? Um, in this uh, dimension, Amadou, we have uh, different variants of how it can be, uh, of how this uh, design can be uh, implemented mm -hmm. in real life case. Uh, some of iBotton readers have, uh, you know, output. Output that will generate a signal when uh, the iBotton key is, uh, is read. Mm -hmm. So basically, you can connect uh, the relay, uh, just general wired uh, automobile relay, uh, one that we showed you there. Yeah, it looks like this. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, connect ignition and uh, the output uh, to this relay. So basically, when there is no a signal, uh, when there is no uh, K identified by the uh, reader, the output will be uh, disabled mm -hmm. and the driver will not be able to activate the ignition, start the car and start moving. Uh, in other case, uh, there will be opportunity uh, to utilize not the reader, not only the reader, but also use the tracking device for this. ADM 333, as Xenia already mentioned, has a discrete output. It works the same. You can connect the wide relay and make it possible to um, to create the very similar scheme of uh, ignition control of ignition cut uh, with the I button and uh, the tracking device. I think we can uh, discuss it uh, personally because uh, it may have uh, quite a bit time to... I think we have a video about this, uh, how to activate the output. Yes, yes, we have, we have... I can share, Mandu, the video with you because we have this video where we... Yes, and uh, yeah. iButton will have a little mm -hmm. uh, specific, its own specific, but in, uh, mm -hmm. in general, uh, it will be the same. So yes, Mandu, it's possible to realize uh, such kind of... Um, such kind of design with little uh, characters that we can conduct. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are all questions, I think we have answered uh, all the questions, right, Dima? Uh, I think we have a question. I will you. check on YouTube as well, whether we have some questions. Um, so yes, Nick, the question that you asked before, uh, yes, it's possible to uh, immobilize uh, a, a, a vehicle mm -hmm. if uh, some verified tag uh, is not presented in, in the area. Um, we are planning to start the manufacturing of these tags. Mm -hmm. um, very soon. I hope that in the next year, I'm not ready to say uh, in what month, but we will present them. They will be also protected with uh, encryption and a special algorithm that I'm not uh, allowed you to tell more. 
so this encrypted talk and our encrypted relay will create um, anti-theft mechanism that I really hope will be useful for different uh, kinds of situation and will find its uses. So I don't see any question on YouTube. Maybe I'm wrong because I have a very poor internet connection here. I don't know why. So um, um, check. But I think yes, we do not have questions on YouTube. Okay. So, um, but if uh, that's really all, and you don't have any question uh, more, I see that. Uh, though actually, we have answered maybe all all. The questions. Um, Last, sorry, will it work with Geofan? Geofan um, in. Well, I, you mean uh, Geofences? Yes. Um, this question uh, has two different answers, actually. Yes, it will, but when we are talking about Geofences created on the server. Uh, and to this moment right now um, you can create a mechanism with some uh, server assistance uh, that will allow you to disable or enable uh, relay uh, change its state and uh, so on according to geofences crossing um, but when we are talking about standalone solution um, without server uh, right now it's not possible but we know about this uh, opportunity we understand it and we plan to make it possible as soon as we can mm -hmm. and is it possible to use the engine cutoff with your own developments for example Arduino uh, it is possible, I think, but yes, we, it's possible. we should discuss it uh, in person. Technically, yes. Yeah, technically it's possible. Yes. We can share our protocol, but we just uh, get in touch with me, with Dima, and we'll discuss on this in person. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention, for being so active today. Uh, now we really understand that all this uh, is not uh, in vain, all our efforts and our webinars, and I see that you have been really missing all this stuff. Thank you. And uh, uh, I don't know whether uh, among you there are uh, people who do not understand uh, English very well, or maybe you have some uh, acquaintances who speak French, but our, uh, uh, sorry, Spanish, our next webinar will be in Spanish next week, and then uh, our third webinar will be in French, and our last webinar will be uh, in Portuguese. They will be just the same webinars, but you are also very, very welcome. Uh, if not to learn more about uh, devices, maybe it will be very useful to you to practice uh, Portuguese, French or Spanish. Thank you very much. See you very soon. Uh, and 